Hello dear friends, may God bless you all and may the spirit of the Most High, the spirit of the Creator, the spirit of God. When I say the spirit of God, you should think the following. Wow, the spirit of God. The spirit of God is the one who said, let there be light and there was light. Let there be dry land and earth came into existence. So the Spirit of God is the one who said, let there be this and that and the other. Everything that exists in heaven and on earth is the creation of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Most High God. Have you ever imagined having Him inside of you? Have you thought about this? Oh, Bishop, but this is too difficult. Come on. I've been seeking the Holy Spirit for many years, and I still don't have Him. Indeed. Indeed, it's not easy. Do you know why it's not easy? Let me tell you. I have also gone through this difficulty. And do you know why it's not easy? Because the difficult thing is not in Him coming upon us. The difficulty is in us placing all, our all, on His altar. That's the difficult thing. We find it hard to receive the Holy Spirit because of this. You have your own dreams. Oh, I want this. If you are single, oh, I want to get married. Oh, I want to conquer this. I want to conquer that. Oh, I want to buy my house. I want to guarantee my future. People hold on to the things of this world, of this life. And then it becomes difficult. And every time that you hold on to something of this world, the harder it becomes for you to receive the Holy Spirit. Because... Imagine you, dear friends, think with me, think with me. Jesus said that the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God is like a man who found a precious treasure, a valuable treasure in a field. And what did he do? This is a parable. He hid it, he buried that treasure, he went back to his home, sold everything he had, he got rid of everything, a hundred percent, and then he bought the field where the treasure was. And so is the Holy Spirit. You have to have this understanding you shouldn't blame the pastor because you don't have the Holy Spirit. You shouldn't blame the church, the denomination. You shouldn't blame God. It's not because you are in sin. No, it's not always the case. Sometimes the person is not in sin and they think, oh, I'm not in sin, so I have the right to receive the Holy Spirit. I have the right. I deserve. And that's wrong. That's wrong. No one deserves. We are all miserable sinners. However, when we place our dreams on the altar of God, what's your greatest dream? What is your greatest goal? And I say in terms of the things of this world, what is it that you've been entertaining inside your heart for years since you were a child, a boy, a girl? That's it. This dream or these dreams, place them on the altar. When you place them all on the altar, then from the altar will come the spirit that will sanctify you, that will possess you, that will receive you as a living offering for him. And then he descends upon you. This is what happened to Jesus. 
Jesus had to receive the Holy Spirit in order to finish the work that he did. So, when he received the Holy Spirit, the Holy Text says that being in the form of God, he did not consider it robbery to be equal with God because he was born of God and he had received the Spirit of God. But still, he made himself of no reputation, zero reputation, zero reputation. He couldn't say, oh, I am the Son of God, I was born of the Holy Spirit, I received the Holy Spirit, you saw the Holy Spirit as a dove coming upon me, nothing like that. Jesus didn't say anything. He took the form of a bond servant. A servant is the one who obeys. A servant only serves and nothing else. Did you know that? A servant only serves to serve, or he only lives to serve because he's a servant. And that's what Jesus did. And before God, there is no boss, there is no head, there is no I'm this or that, nothing. You have to put yourself as a servant, a servant giving your desire, or rather, giving your desires to him. And coming, so Jesus came in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, meaning that he was a servant until the last moment of his life which was a death of cross, which was the most shameful and humiliating death there was back then. Therefore, the holy text says, look how nice, if he honored God with his will by humbling himself, if he stripped himself off of his glory and divine nature, he stripped himself off of his glory, becoming like a man. So God, the Father, the Holy Text says, therefore, God also, therefore, God also, you know, there are little words in the Bible that you have to stop and think about. Therefore, meaning that due to what he did, which was to humble himself, God has also, also, God also has highly exalted him above all things, highly exalted, above everything, all things, all things, and given him the name and given him the name which is above every name, the most important name there is in heaven and on earth. What for? That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, every knee should bow, of those in heaven, of those on earth, and of those under the earth. Everyone bows down before him, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. What for? To the glory of God the Father. So, imagine, when you honor God with your life, oh my God, He is my will, my dreams, you know what I want for my life. You know, you know of my dreams. I will repeat my testimony to you because there was a time that I was walking on the streets there in Lapa 
Rio de Janeiro. I was going to work with books under my arms and I was walking and I was thinking I'm going to do this. At the time I was in between going to uni to do economics or engineering and I was thinking engineering or economics. I was in college at the time and I was thinking I'm going to get married and establish a family. Those dreams as a young man, there's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. These are dreams. But the Holy Spirit spoke to me clearly. Just as you are listening to me right now, He spoke to me straight away, out of the blue. Out of the blue. I was thinking of my dreams. The Holy Spirit said to me, And what does it profit you if you gain the whole world and lose your soul? When he said that, I understood perfectly well what his will for my life was. I stopped. My thoughts stopped and focused on this word. And since then, I've placed all of my dreams on the altar and allow God to direct my life according to His will. And today I'm here, 60 years doing that. Isn't it nice? Many people say, oh, Bishop Macedo was special, or Bishop Macedo was lucky, or he was very smart, he was very intelligent. And no, it's nothing like that. Nothing like that. Nothing like that. Do you know what my secret was or what it is? I acquired the field that has the inexhaustible treasure. And this treasure entered me, but I had to let go of my personal treasure. I had to sacrifice my treasure which was nothing, to be honest, but I put everything on the altar. And in exchange, the Lord gave me His Spirit. So what He did to me, He's been doing to many people. Praise God. This is our goal, our desire, that everyone will receive the Holy Spirit. I want you to have the Holy Spirit, my friend, more than money, more than marriage, more than fulfilling a dream, more than good health, more than restoring your home, your family, more than anything. The Holy Spirit is the beginning of life. He's Jesus in spirit inside of us to guide us into all truth, to turn us into a fountain which means a blessing. When the Holy Spirit comes upon us, He turns us into the blessing itself. And when you receive the Holy Spirit, you stop depending on people. You stop depending on things, on the world, on everything the world has to offer. You disconnect, you reject this world, not people, but everything else comes in second place in your life because you have the Spirit of God inside of you. Do you like to be begging for prayer? Oh, Bishop, pray for me. Bishop, please pray for my husband, my father, my son, my sister. Oh, Bishop, when you receive the Holy Spirit, you will pray for them. You will be the fountain. Jesus said that. Jesus said, listen, whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him, speaking of the Holy Spirit, referring to the Holy Spirit, this water, meaning the Holy Spirit, will become in him a fountain that will 
spring up into everlasting life. Not to spring for some time, but for all eternity. Do you believe in this, dear friends? Do you believe? Very well. If you believe, then do what Jesus did. Jesus was God and he became man. He humbled himself. He, he and the Father were one, but he came from the Father and made himself a servant, one who serves. Jesus was servant until his last drop of blood. And that's why God highly exalted him. And you don't have to be crucified. No, nothing like that. But you have to crucify the world. You have to leave the world in second place. Because he who loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Neither can it be. So many people don't receive the Holy Spirit because they love the world. They love the things of this life, of this world that is fleeting. That's it. When you receive the Holy Spirit, you won't ask me anymore, Bishop, was I baptized with the Holy Spirit? No, the Holy Spirit himself will confirm within you, my son, my daughter. You can now call me Father. How wonderful. So, you who were born and you don't know your father, your mother, you grew up and you were thrown into this world. You are cast into the world. You suffer. You've only met suffering and pain so far and injustice. You've only had pain your entire life. You don't know what joy is. Perhaps joy is like a dream, a mirage in your head because you live tormented by this demonic world. But when you receive the Holy Spirit, you will become the happiest person, the most joyful, the most full of peace person in the world. You have as much peace as I do. You won't have more, neither less. <laughs> You are going to be as joyful, as happy as I am. Why? Because the Spirit of God will fill you and turn you into the blessing itself, into a fountain. You know that a fountain is always flowing, always giving. Yes or no? Isn't it nice? A fountain is always giving, giving, and giving. So, dear friends, Think big. God is great. Our God is a big God. God is infinitely great. What he promised to Abraham, up until today, he's been fulfilling. He's been honoring Abraham. Because when we speak of the God of Abraham, we speak of the God who made a covenant with Abraham. And this because Abraham served him. Abraham was a servant. That was all. He placed his future, his destiny, everything in his hands. Do the same. You can do that. Do you need money to do that? No. Do you need to be deserving of it? No, you don't need anything. You only need to decide in your mind. Listen, indeed, now I understood. The penny has finally dropped. I will do it now. Go today. Today still, go to a church, even if it's your own church, your own denomination. Go. It doesn't matter where. Or there where you are. You can, right now, in this very moment, receive the Holy Spirit. Did you know that? There is no walls, there is no blockages for Him to come upon you except yourself. Yourself. When you place your entire life on the altar, which means 
you truly place yourself as a servant of His. Oh my God, let your will be done. Do your will in my life. Here it is. My dreams, my dreams, my projects. You continue studying, you continue working, you continue doing what you do. However, your thoughts are focused on Him. Then He will visit you and it can happen right now in this very moment. It can happen right now. Oh, Bishop, pray for me. No, I will not pray. You will pray for yourself. Use the faith that you have there within you. It's small, no problem. But it's powerful. If it's pure, clean, transparent, sincere, God is looking for people who are sincere, people who are sincere. He doesn't look for those who are perfect. He doesn't look for perfection in us because He knows He won't find. No one is perfect. No one would be perfect for Him. However, when a person says, Oh my God, I'm full of mistakes. I'm like this. We all are. We all are. We are all full of flaws. We are human beings. Sometimes we say things that we shouldn't have said. Sometimes we think things we shouldn't have thought. Sometimes we look at things that we shouldn't have looked. Sometimes we judge everything wrong. Because we are human beings. We are flesh and bones. We are this substance that deteriorates. But when we present to God this sincerity, dear friends, there is nothing like sincerity because God knows who we are already. But when we recognize our frailty, our weaknesses, our nothingness, and we say, Oh my Lord, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us and, and save us. Then God approves and He seals and He blesses us and He fills us with His Spirit. Dear friends, you can take advantage of this moment wherever you are and, and do that right there where you are. Do not depend on anybody depend on yourself and above all depend on the promises of God may God bless you all and today as it usually happens on Wednesdays but especially today this Wednesday do you enjoy the Word of God you do do you like hearing the Word of God you do amen very well it's good when you are in an environment that is clean, pure, where everyone is in the same faith, in the same spirit, with one heart, seeking one Lord and serving only one Lord. That is the church of the Lord Jesus. So if you want today, here in the Temple of Solomon, look there, the temple, have a look here. Have, have a look. Very well. Go there. It doesn't cost anything. You don't even have to pay for parking. You just have to go with an open heart in order to place what is inside of you on the altar. May God bless you all. Tonight at 8 p.m. or in any universal church of the kingdom of God is spread around the world, okay? May God bless you all, and I see you tomorrow in the name of Jesus, and may you have a wonderful day as you've never had before in your entire life. Amen.